A coup attempt was prevented in Sudan. The future fate of the Russian Navy base is under a very big question. The Sudanese authorities prevented an attempted coup. A group of military personnel from Sudan attempted to stage a coup by trying to seize the state parliament building and bringing military trucks and light armored vehicles to the streets of Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. Thanks to the timely actions of the Sudanese authorities, a military coup in the country was prevented, while the national army had to use tanks, which were also introduced into the streets of the Sudanese capital. It is known that the government forces managed to arrest at least 40 officers who, as it turned out, had previously actively supported the former leader of the country Bashir, while, according to unconfirmed reports, at least 200 people from among those who were directly involved in the coup were detained. A few weeks earlier, it became known that a shipment of Russian weapons was detained in Sudan, which now may lead to all suspicions being turned towards Russia. At the same time, this casts doubt on the fact that Russia will receive the right to build a naval base in this country. Earlier, the United States showed quite a great interest in preventing the Russian military from entering the Sudan, which does not exclude the fact that Washington is involved in the coup in this African state. Afghan pilots who escaped to Uzbekistan are being evacuated to an American military base. The United States has agreed with Uzbekistan on the evacuation of Afghan pilots who escaped from the Taliban. As part of the negotiations between official Washington and Tashkent, it became known that the United States decided to evacuate Afghan military pilots who had previously fled here to one of the U.S. Air Force air bases from the territory of Uzbekistan. At the same time, this means that now the Panjshir resistance forces will not be able to receive air support, although it became known earlier that the Afghan A-29 Tukano attack aircraft deployed to Uzbekistan can have a significant impact on the balance of forces in Afghanistan. In total, there are 585 Afghan pilots, crew members and their relatives in Uzbekistan. As expected, these people will fly to the U.S. military base in Doha, but it is not yet clear whether they will go to the U.S. or anywhere else in the future, RIA Novosti News Agency reports. According to earlier information, up to 50 military aircraft and helicopters of the former Afghan Air Force may be located on the territory of Uzbekistan. At the same time, most of them are combat vehicles. About a week ago, there were reports that airstrikes could have been launched against the Taliban from the territories of neighboring Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, but there is no official confirmation of this data. Mohammadi sent 17 choppers to Panjshir, Kabul, Pajwak, Hezbi-i-Islami Afghanistan, Hia, leader, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar says former Defense Minister Bismillah Mohammadi has sent 17 helicopters and other military equipment to Panjshir province. Hekmatyar made the claim during Friday's sermon. The Panjshiris have s net hundreds of tanks, pickups, artillery and military vehicles to the province after the withdrawal of U.S. troops. Quote, the Hia chief accused Mohammadi of transferring 17 Afghan Air Force, AAF, helicopters in addition to other equipment after he was appointed as defense minister. Without elaborating, Hekmatyar said the fighting in Panjshir was not a war between Pashtuns and Tajiks. He called the hostilities a power struggle. Now the governor and other officials have been appointed from Panjshir. Quote, Hekmatyar confirmed the Taliban had taken control of all districts and government offices in Panjshir after several days of fighting with the National Resistance Front NRF. The Taliban have announced a new administration, it was a necessary and urgent task. The administrative vacuum had to be filled. There has been criticism and objections, the Taliban's response is that they will definitely bring positive soon, he added. The HIA leader called on all Afghans to support positive changes by giving the new administration a fair chance. According to him, the current interim administration includes figures who have fought against NATO and held at Guantanamo Bay, Bagram and Pool i Charkai prisons. Hekmatyar alleged the United States, Britain, France and Israel were trying to fan the flames of another war in Afghanistan, the Shura i Nazar and the ousted government trying to recruit rogues to avenge their shameful defeat. He referred to U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham's statement about the increased likelihood of a civil war in Afghanistan, support for and recognition of Panjshir. The senator stressed America must return to Afghanistan, just as it went back to Iraq and Syria. These demons plan to divide Afghanistan. Quote, on the other hand, the former defense minister has not yet commented on the allegation leveled against him by Hekmatyar. The difficult situation in Afghanistan carries risks for neighboring countries. Due to the aggravation of the situation in Afghanistan, risks remain for Central Asia, Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov said on the air of the Rossiya One TV channel. The politician named the two most likely threats to the countries of the region. The types of threats are clear. This is the penetration of terrorist groups under various forms, including under the guise of refugees, Borisov said. The deputy prime minister called the increase in drug trafficking another potential threat to the countries neighboring Afghanistan. 
Also in the interview, Borisov also called measures to respond to potential threats. If necessary, we will be able to quickly increase the necessary forces and means, and quickly respond to newly emerging threats, Borisov said in an interview with the TV channel. Recall that against the background of the Afghan aggravation, the CSTO countries are strengthening weapons and synchronizing decisions in the field of development of national military industrial complexes. Only Russia can protect Central Asia from threats from Afghanistan. The political scientist expressed the opinion that most countries and international institutions have simply turned away from the Afghan problem. Andrei Groza, head of the Central Asia and Kazakhstan Department of the CIS Institute, told what defense results the CSTO summit brought. The expert highlighted the declaration, which reported on the plan for the rapid deployment of the contingent in Central Asia. Grozin, in an interview with the publication, Polit Expert, noted that this is a very effective measure. And he added that taking into account the work of relevant ministries, the foundation for this document was laid long before the Afghan crisis. The political scientist added that the document was amended related to the issues of responding to a possible threat from Afghanistan. These changes should help Tajikistan, which has the longest border with a troubled country, and Uzbekistan can also show interest. Due to the unstable situation in the region, all the CSTO countries are beginning to increase their defense resources. Apart from Russia, there is not a single state and not a single international institution that can somehow repel the threats that may follow from Afghanistan. This is an objective fact that is very difficult to refute, the expert explained. That is why, according to Grozin, the Central Asian countries are trying to synchronize their actions with Moscow. Neither China, nor Turkey, nor even the North Atlantic Alliance demonstrate any desire to become a power umbrella for the states bordering Afghanistan and Central Asia, the political scientist added. He suggested that the signed document is the basis for the coming months. Russian Tu-22M3S are ready to strike the NATO fleet in the Mediterranean Sea within two hours. In case of a threat, Russian Tu-22M3 bombers are ready to strike NATO forces in the Mediterranean Sea within two hours. The recent appearance of Russian Tu-22M3 long-range bombers in Syria allowed the Russian military to work out a strike against NATO forces in the Mediterranean Sea. As it turned out, in order to achieve their goals, Russian long-range bombers will need only about two hours to successfully strike at NATO ships in the Mediterranean Sea. At the same time, the strikes themselves can be carried out even from the airspace of Iraq, which will significantly reduce the time of destruction of enemy forces. At the moment, the North Atlantic Alliance is trying to demonstrate its superiority to Russia in the Mediterranean Sea. As the recent visits of the Russian Tu-22M3 to Syria have shown, in the event of a conflict, Russian long-range bombers, which are quite rightly called aircraft carrier killers, can successfully attack NATO ships in the shortest possible time. Moreover, taking into account the modernization of the infrastructure of the Khamenei airbase, by 2025, long-range Tu-22M3S can be based on a permanent basis on the territory of the Russian military airfield, which will significantly strengthen the Russian military presence in the region. We are here, NRF busts Taliban propaganda, releases photo of Ahmad Massoud from Panjshir. The undated photograph shows Ahmad Massoud sitting along with other leaders of the Resistance Front in an open area in the Panjshir Valley. The National Resistance Front NRF, of Afghanistan has released a photograph of Northern Alliance leader Ahmad Massoud from Panjshir Valley. The undated photograph shows Ahmad Massoud sitting along with other leaders of the Resistance Front in an open area in the Panjshir Valley. The photograph pokes holes into the Taliban's claims of haven taken complete control of the Panjshir province. Ahmad Massoud in the mountains of Panjshir today. Don't trust the propaganda. We are here. And we are determined. R-E-S-I-S-T-A-N-C-E-2. Zero is a must. Pick. Twitter. Com. H-B-H-E-Z-C-9 Med. Sarfaraz, at Sarfaraz 1201, September 14, 2021. After the Taliban claimed victory over Panjshir the last bastion of the resistance forces on September 7, rumors began to arise over Ahmad Massoud's whereabouts. In his last message, which was more than a week ago, the leader had called for a national uprising against the Taliban. In an audio message sent to media, Massoud said, Wherever you are, inside or outside, I call on you to begin a national uprising for the dignity, freedom and prosperity of our country. Quote, the photograph released suggests that leaders of the National Resistance Front continue to remain stationed on ground to save the remaining areas of Panjshir from falling into the hands of the Taliban. Where is Ahmad Massoud, the son of former Afghan guerrilla commander Ahmad Shah Massoud, who has been at the forefront of the battle against the Taliban was believed to have fled Panjshir Valley after a major military offensive by the Taliban last week. 
several reports claimed that the leader had left for Turkey or other Central Asian countries. However, all have been declared false. Read, Iran condemns, fratricide, in Panjshir amid Taliban atrocities, seeks free fair polls. Intelligence from several countries suggested that Massoud had not left the valley. Iranian news agency Faz refuted these rumors and claimed that he is safe and has been living in the northeastern part of the country. French public intellectual and journalist Bernard-Henri Lévy also revealed that he had spoken to Massoud who confirmed that he is still holed up in the province. Read, Afghanistan ambassador to Tajikistan confirms that Pakistan Air Force bombed Panjshir. Despite the Taliban hoisting its flag in Panjshir's capital Bazarik, the NRF had stressed that its guerrillas were present at strategic locations in the province. Qasim Mohammadi, who is said to be close to Massoud, told FNA that after the Taliban entered Panjshir, it took over 70% of the main streets and passages under their control, but the valleys of Panjshir are still under the complete control of the popular forces. The militia of Afghanistan conducted a surprise attack on the Taliban in Baglan province. The regrouped militias delivered an unexpected blow to the Taliban in Baglan province. A few hours ago, it became known that the Afghan resistance forces unexpectedly attacked a large group of Taliban in Baglan province. According to the data provided, the forces of the National Resistance Front regrouped and unexpectedly launched an attack on the forces of the terrorist movement, Taliban, banned in Russia, ed. in a neighboring province. At the moment, it is known that as a result of the protracted confrontation, each of the parties suffered serious losses. Not only the Taliban had to retreat, but also the militia forces. Nevertheless, given the fact that the National Resistance Front has successfully escaped from the encirclement in Panjshir, experts believe that now attacks can be organized on the Taliban throughout the country. As for the province of Panjshir itself, the Taliban has not yet managed to take control of it, because the militants control only about 20% of the area of the rebellious region located north of the Afghan capital. Among other things, at the disposal of the information and news agency Avia, there was also a unique video on which the Taliban terrorists criticize the leadership of the movement for its connection with Pakistan, which indicates a likely split of the movement.